Hi again, it's Dan here from RubbermanStudios.com. This is part three of a three-part series looking at Reaper and in particular customizing toolbars uh, so that you can speed up your workflow. Uh, video one was looking at how to actually set up those toolbars and why it is a bit of a time saver. Um, video two in the series was looking at screen sets so you could have multiple sets of toolbars and be able to flick between the two depending on what processes you're doing at the time. And this particular video, I'm going to go through my personal setup as it stands at this point. Uh, it's a fluid setup, so I quite often am changing this as I'm learning and adding uh, new regular behaviors. So I'm going to flick through each one um, individually. I'm not going to spend too much time on them. Uh, we'll go through and just see, and hopefully you might be able to have a few um, tips here that you might take and use in your uh, sessions as well. So as I said in previous videos, I have a, a recording setup and a, and a mixing screen set. So this is my uh, recording setup, and I'll go through these really quickly. Um, the first one I have here is in terms of setting up markers and regions, and this whole area here is setting up the session. And so um, this one is purely based on time selection. So I might have a time selection here, and I can click on this, and I can type in verse one, or what have you. I can select a color, um, green for instance, and there we go, we now have verse one sitting up here, in the uh, the region editor up the top there, so that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to do it based on the actual items themselves. So perhaps this item, I can select it, and I've got this shortcut set up to insert a region from the actual item itself. And again, the same thing, chorus, set the color, and exactly the same deal, except I missed the color then, but that's okay. Uh, so you get the idea, and that's a, a really quick way of setting up a session, um, just using a, a time selection or an item selection, and hitting one of these buttons and uh, entering in the detailed information, so you've got your session all looking good, ready to go. Um, I have in my main toolbar a little master bus on and off uh, button, and so you can see I've got it clicked on now. Uh, and the next third button along is looking at time signature and tempo change. So at the point of where the marker is, I can insert a new tempo change and it will um, react accordingly. So there you go, that's put in um, there. And that's something that you might want to do. Um, just again, if you've got these regions set up and snapping um, set on, you can do that quite quickly. Metronome settings, um, enabled or disabled, and the actual settings of the metronomes themselves. It does work when you right click it as well. Um, the other button, I don't know why I've got them both set up. But one thing I do have set up, instead of right clicking and getting the metronome um, settings up and having to click pre-roll before playback or pre-roll before recording, uh, you know, sometimes I want to do that, sometimes I don't, and it, quite often I'm changing them quite regularly. Uh, I've just got those set up as their own little macros there. So pre-roll for recording, pre-roll for before playing, I can have both going. Uh, the one after, I really like this one. This one's setting up loop points, um, being able to loop a certain section. Um, this one's based on items. So again, if I click on an item, it might be this section. The vocalist might be having trouble doing this section of a vocal over and over. If I click that button, you can see the loop points are now set up based on where that item is, and we can record that over and over again without me having to, uh, to worry about pressing record every time. Another example, sitting right next to it, is the uh, is the toggle loop points linked to time selection. So it's the same as what we had before. Here's a time selection, click it, now I have loop points. So it's kind of like what we did with the regions, but instead loop points. Um, the old trim behind media items when editing um, is, is this thing that we have to flick through all the time in the options. I just prefer having a little button up here that toggles that on and off. Um, this one's probably the real time saver here, and, and this is just when you're wanting to record something on the fly and you need some tracks set up really quickly. Now these are SWS extension um, macros that I've got set up here. So it's a free download if you go to uh, this website here. You'll be able to download that for free. It's better to donate. These guys put in a lot of hard um, time and effort to make this uh, possible, but what they do is amazing. So here we go, I've got, uh, the first one is just insert a track from a template, and you can see my templates um, pop up there, the ones I've saved. But what I'll point your attention to is notice how some of them have got numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Um, before and, and, and beforehand, and that's that's really important for this SWS extension that I'm just about to go through. So what I've got here, I've got a drum one, I believe that might be my full drummer's eight tracks, I can't recall. Um, a bass with an amplitude um, setting set on it, a bass with a clean, a guitar with my standard amplitude setting on there, a clean guitar, uh, a whole set of vocals and one single vocal, and also an uh, easy drummer and my standard reverb that I use. So I could have, um, perhaps I've recorded a vocal and a guitar and I think, you know what, I want to lay some bass down, I want my uh, standard bass sound. I can click on, that was the guitar, let's do another guitar then for this example. 
and my guitar loads up with the effect and my uh, my usual setting ready to go. Um, the one next to that, let's have an example again, puts on amplitude, but it's more a default setting, so I can change it. Because I use that other guitar setting a lot, it's uh, quick and easy. Same with the drums, let's have a look. There you go. So I've one click, I've now got all the drums um, set up in their buses and their folders, uh, all with their inputs and outputs routed the way I like it. Uh, ready to go. So that's something I can set up really, really quickly. And of course, you can set up session templates too, but on the fly when you're recording, that's one really quick way of doing it. I have uh, item properties to lock uh, to lock the item properties, so perhaps the vocalist is really happy with this set here, and I don't want to be clicking um, the mouse button to change the set that we had. So I can um, I can simply select those and click the lock button, and now I can't change them with the mouse. And of course, I can select them again and hit unlock. And it just saves me having to uh, memorize more shortcuts. Okay, heading to the mix, the mixing and editing uh, window that I've got set up. The first one, actually I need to go back and turn something on first, it's already on. Okay, the, uh, the first one I've got set up is about when playback will stop. And so I might, for example, let's mute this because this is just silly. Uh, this vocalist here, let's have a listen. With the consequences... Now you'll notice that the playhead's still playing, uh, it's not stopping. So if I have this macro, this is another SWS uh, stop playback at the end of time selection. With the consequences. Okay, you notice the playhead stops at the end. And so that's sometimes when you're editing and you want to hear what's going on specifically and you just want it to stop at the end of that particular point, you don't want it to keep playing. I find that really, really handy to, handy to toggle on and off. Uh, I've got split items in there. I really don't need that. It's just the button S, so I've I've got that in there just probably for for reminder more than anything. Uh, but this one here is kind of cool. Customize, uh, sorry, it's a customized one. Uh, it's next transport split and uh, a transient split. Sorry, and that works really well when you've got some drums. I don't have a session up here at the moment, but by clicking this button, it, it detects the next transient and makes a, a cut there. And the following button I have set up is the transient detection setting, so I can change the threshold. Uh, and then adjust and just literally click this button over and over and it will cut at uh, various tra uh, transients. Really good for drum editing. Uh, a delete section, I made this as a custom one as well, so I can just select a section, hit um, Shift X, and it deletes that middle section there. That's uh, something I like to do a lot, especially when editing toms. I've got the same settings on this window as I did the other with the lock, um, uh, locking and unlocking. I've got render to a new take, so we might really like this vocal here and I actually want to render that to a brand new take okay and now that's just rendered that down there as the bottom take there and uh, and uh, it's all in one um, I've also got freezing um, so that it can freeze with the effects on there as a new take as well um, uh, freeze to mono freeze to stereo unfreeze and the freeze properties same with glue I've got uh, gluing items and gluing items including fades quantize uh, pre-roll uh, sorry um, crossfade enabled and uh, an auto crossfade on splits as well. We can turn them on and off as well. They're in my main window too, but I find it handy to have it all in one section up the top as well. Same with ripple editing and group editing as well. Um, the selection sets. Selection sets are quite interesting. I haven't used them as much as I thought I would, but we'll, uh, that might change. This is when you have a couple of items selected, say like this. I've got two items selected here. I can hit save set one. And then if I'm over here and I've selected something else, uh, I can hit load set one and it goes back to my previous um, section that I have had selected earlier. Uh, I did find that handy once when editing drums. I haven't used it since. Uh, and the last one is the snapping snapping on and off and also snapping relative to the grid. So that's something, uh, that's the way I use it. I do edit these and and, uh, and I'm adding some and removing some as we go along. I've also got some in the master uh, master window there with the master toolbar with the rendering options and opening opening of the render queue but overall I'm finding this um, especially the insert new tracks and a lot of these uh, little ones up here are finding a really really helpful to speed along my recording and, and mixing and they li literally do save hours per session hopefully you enjoyed something uh, here and got something out of it uh, it's Dan here again from Rubberman Studios and I hope you enjoyed the series and uh, yeah look forward to talking to you again soon thanks